Matthew chapter 13. The same day, take it off from chapter 12, Jesus went Jesus out of the house. So he was in the house and sat by the seaside along the beach. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. This is a great church assembly. The pulpit has become a ship, a boat. He's going to use the water as a means of expressing his voice louder for the people to hear. Why would I mean, you're so loud. Well, he's got multitudes of people. And he spake many things unto them in parables. Notice parables are now happening. Behold, a sower went to sow, went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And the fowls, get that, came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprang up because they had not, no deepness of earth. When the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thistles sprung up and joked them. But others fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. I'm speaking parables. 11 15, 13 43, Mark 4 9 and 23, Mark 7 16, Luke 8 8, and Luke 14 35. He has ears. When the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Now he ends the parable with, Who has ears to hear, let him hear. And no one understood. Even his own disciples. He answered said unto them, Because it is given unto you, the disciples, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, the multitudes, it is not given. That's interesting. Jesus is preaching a word to them and they can't understand it. But he's preaching the word to them. And when you've got a public ministry and you're telling people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, many do not understand, but you still tell them. For whosoever have to him shall be given. He shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, for him shall be taken away, even that he has. And this is where the communism, Nicolaitans run. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Now, understand in the Bible in most cases is your relationship to God I can know how to drive I can apply wisdom to drive a car I can use my understanding to drive a car to pick up people go to church and in them is fulfilled the prophecy oh this is prophecy one of 48 prophecies of Jesus Christ <coughs> of Isaiah saying by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing shall ye see and shall not receive why motive for this people's heart is wax gross it's grown it's 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 gotten worse their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have clothed now mark that down for free will God didn't close their eyes you know you know God said that he hardened Pharaoh's heart he didn't harden these people's hearts they did it themselves Lisa anytime they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. 
And that sounds like a very cool verse if you read. But these are people who have outright rejected Jesus Christ. Why would God allow someone into heaven? Why would God heal someone? Why would God permit someone who has rejected what he has said to enter in his glory? They wouldn't like it. I say sometimes in the public ministry, if you don't love the Bible, you won't love heaven. Because this is the only thing besides men's souls that are going to be in heaven that's here on the earth right now. Why would Jesus save these people if they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus? You get to heaven, you'll have World War VI, World War VII, World War VIII, World War can go on. But, blessed are your eyes, the disciples, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. They, they don't understand it. So now he's going to open up the parable to them. For very I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, the, the Messiah. And have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear the word of God and have not heard them hear ye therefore the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word the word of the kingdom and understands it not then cometh the wicked one match that back to the falls of verse 4 and get those two because it's going to show up again so in the kingdom, you have a person who's out planting seed, the word of God. Here's the word, that's the seed. And catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received, which received the seed by the wayside. So when you're witnessing, one aspect of your witnessing is Satan's going to come and take the word out. Mr. Bongo Man is going to play his bongos to dry it out. Somebody is going to come up and want to buy something. The phone is going to ring. The television is going to be too loud. Whatever Satan can do that you can't hear that word. But, number two, he that receiveth the seed unto stony places, the same is that heareth the word. Don't give me films. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't give me fellowship dinners. Don't give me play acting. Jesus tells you in this parable, if it's not by the word, they won't get saved. Plain and simple. And a non, which means at once. Receive, I'm sorry, a non with joy receiveth it. So they receive the word. Satan does not take it out. It's an emotional response. Yet have not root in himself, but dureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. Remember the word is Jesus and Jesus is the word and for the Bible itself. I mean, if you ever picked up a Bible and go in public, how many times have you been ridiculed for having the Bible? By and by, he is offended. You offended me. It's in the Bible. Here's someone who, who's gotten saved and they're offended by being mistreated because of the word. Troubles will follow a soul winner. You'll have converts, and because of tribulations and persecutions, your converts will fall away. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word. Not the person. And he becometh unfruitful. The world follows a soul winner. And yes, as a family, we go down to the 
the farmer's market. Do you realize how much converse interferes with me preaching the gospel? Well, that watermelon is $2. Well, I only got to five. Uh, I think I got $3, Jay. Well, how much is that? Oh, that's a beautiful thing you got there. Is that popcorn fresh? Here, hon, will you take my bag? Hey, will you take the kid here? I, I got one. All that the Bible, Jesus says, is thorns, weeds, and they choke the word. Many people, I'm speaking about our family, many people at the farmer's market do not hear the word being preached because of the world. Number four, he that receiveth the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, Romans 10, 17, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Not everybody is a hundredfold Christian. Get that. Not everybody is a sixtyfold Christian. Not all Christians are thirtyfold. But if you produce fruit, you please God. If you produce fruit way God wants us to produce fruit, you're pleasing God. Those are the four conditions of your public ministry. Satan will come and grab it, trials and tribulation, the world, and you'll get someone who becomes faithful to the word. Another parable put he forth unto them would be the disciples, saying, The kingdom of heaven, all right, let's get this, the kingdom of heaven, is like unto a man which sold, a, sold, which sold good seed in his field, so the kingdom of heaven is a field where you throw seeds. And while men slept, you sleep in the kingdom of heaven, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, is not thou so good seed? in thy field from whence then has it tears tears are identical only to an expert's eye you cannot tell the difference until they mature the tears have no head thus no value but they've got to grow completely maturity and then when that wheat has its head oh that one don't have a head that one's got to go. Now you see where this is work. This is not Christian. You tell me if a Christian don't bring forth fruit, he's going to be cast. No, see, this is not Christian. This is this is dealing with the Jews. He said unto them, "The enemy has done this." The servants said unto him. Wilt thou then that we go, go, yeah, that we go and gather it up? They said, Nay, at least while you gather up the tares, Zephaniah three eight, he root up also the wheat with him. Don't get you don't get them mixed up. So if you are wheat, Jesus said you won't lose it. You will not get mixed up with the tares. Get that. God knows of his own. And we're not even talking about church age doctrine. Let both grow up. Let both grow together unto the harvest. Isn't that today? Let the evil people grow up with the good people. And in the, in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. Now that's not the rapture, is it? You read a rapture where, where the, the evil ones go up? No. So see, that's not church age. You know where the you know where the tares go? When Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent, he gets rid of all the wicked ones, doesn't he? And who's left? The Jewish people. And those that helped him. And bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So a barn is in the heaven kingdom. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, 
which a man took and sold in his field. There's that field. Here. Field is a type of world in the Bible, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it's grown, it becomes greatest among herbs. It has a lot of uses. Too many to number. And becometh a tree. Wow. So that the birds, who were the fowls in the first parable? Satan. Who were the tares? Those of Satan. Who were the fowls here? Satan and his people are lodging in the tree. Birds of the air come and lodge in the branches. So you know what the kingdom of heaven is? There are wicked people in it too. And Jesus acknowledges that. Another parable spank ye unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. Leaven is never good in the Bible. It's called false doctrine. It's called something that, that takes something clean and it pollutes it. And grows and grows and grows. Which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. She hides it. It's not part of the recipe. I mean, if you're going to make a recipe, and you know, you're reading the box, and you've got flour, eggs, milk. You don't hide something in there if it's on the box, do you? Let me take an egg in this cake mix. Hide the egg. No, let's see. She hides it in there. She doesn't want anybody to know what, what she's done. I'll fool them. Till the whole was lemon. And these things spanked Jesus unto the multitudes in parables. So they couldn't understand them. Turns to his disciples and turns to the people. His disciples are going to get it. But the people are not. Still in the boat. I assume. And without a parable spank he not unto them. That it might be fulfilled which is spoken of prophet saying. Here we go another prophecy. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Secrets of the Bible. Mysteries. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away. Go on. And went into the house. Now he entered the house. In the beginning of this chapter. He goes back in the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the terrors of the field. And he answered and said unto them, Now watch up, you're going to get some learning. He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sows good seed. Good news. The gospel. Gospel means good news. The field is the world. Now get that throughout your Bible. Every time you read field, it's a type of the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Jewish people. We're not of the kingdom. The Jewish people are. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now notice the wicked. Now you mark your Bible, if you mark your Bible, the wicked. Every time you see the wicked. Now that's talking about wicked people, but that's talking about one specific article. The Antichrist. And he says the wicked one. There's only going to be two classes of people in the tribulation. The Jews and those of the wicked one. And those that help the Jews fall under the Jews. And get the kingdom. Because of what their conduct was to the Jews. The enemy that sold them. Get it ready. Is the devil. So how can Jesus and Satan be brothers? That's nonsense. The harvest is the end of the world. When Jesus Christ comes back. The reapers are the angels. As therefore the terrors are gathered and burned in the fire. There's hellfire. So shall it be in the end of the world. And the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Ooh. 
There goes your Americans. You offend me. All right, get out. I'm offensive. Get out. And them which do iniquity. So we got more tares in the wheat. Backs up the previous. He's telling you when he read the tares of the wheat, he's telling you what it is. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. And there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth and scripture with scripture. That's hell. So Jesus never preached about hell is a lie. Then shall the, now the tares are thrown into hell. They have no fruit. You can't say that for the people today. You can't say that. Well, you don't bring you don't bring forth no Christians, so you, you're not. You can't say that. There are Gentile people at the end of the tribulation. They bring forth fruit. What's their fruit? They visited the Jews. They fed the Jews. Works, works, works. Get that, please, with Matthew. We're not of works. We're saved by grace, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Well, their father would be the Jews. God their father. Who has ears to hear, let them hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven it's like into a treasure hid in a field, the world. The which when a man has found, he finds his treasure. He hideth. Who, the man or the treasure? I don't know. Found the treasure, he hideth. And for joy, therefore, goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field the millennium and takes the curse off the earth the land is given to the jews with king jesus the king of king the lord of lords who is the treasure the people of israel the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price, just one pearl, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, pearls are the only gemstones that are living organization. They're alive inside of a, of a, a clam, oyster, one of them things. And it's actually living. And they're worth a lot of money. So a pearl that is living as a gem is likened to living people. And then when we get to the judgment seat of Christ as Christian, one of the things we have is precious stones. One of the precious stones is pearls. We see pearls are one of are the 12 gates in New Jerusalem. It could be possibly with pearls. It could be every soul that we won for Jesus Christ had some part in that. That will be remain through the fire as a pearl to put on our crown. Just that's my own personal opinion and some things I've heard preachers say, and it's not scriptural, but it's possible. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. He owns it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. And when it was full, they drew to shore. Now he's talking to four fishermen. They're like, yeah, all right, net, fish. And one of the tax collector, you know, he's probably saying, well, what's the revenue of those fish you caught? And part of the other disciples, I don't know if they're really interested, but and gathered the good into vessels, the good fish, but cast the bad away. Here, men are like in the fish, and he tells the disciples, Become fishers of men. Bad fish are thrown out, good fish are kept. 
So you see here, like the tares and the wheat, there are good fish and there are bad fish swimming around, walking around, growing in this earth. He's trying to lay it to the disciples. These people are not good. Some people are good. Some people are not good. So when it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Amen. In glory, one day the wicked will be departed from us. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Reference with reference, scripture with scripture. Hell. Jesus said unto him, Have you understood all these things? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. So they knew. Some of them, you know, he they he didn't have to explain. Just I'm wondering if he read them to him and he looked at him like, got it? With the next one? Okay, next one. Stop me. And listen, there was no Peter would definitely stop Peter if there was any problems. So he goes through some of these parables and it's like, okay. Some of them are a little tricky. Lord explain it. And he said unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. I don't understand that verse. Why would say scribe new and old? And I want to go back to that thing with the new wine and the old wine, the new bottles, the old bottle. I don't understand those things. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. He left the house again. And when he was come into his own country, he's in his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue. No, their synagogue. Did you get that? He grew up in that synagogue. Or one of them synagogue. And God says, it's your synagogue. It ain't mine. In so much, in so much that they were astonished. And said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? They're questioning the authority and the, the power of Jesus Christ. And not for good. Just reading a note here. Is not this the carpenter's son? Nope. Only by adoption. But they're saying it in such a way as, who is this guy? What a nerve does he have? Mr. Goody Goody Two Shoe Jesus, high honors and everything, knew everything. Pointing out all the parts of the frog in that section class, got all the good grades. He was just the best thing, never had to eat that. He's, hey, who do you think you are? Is not his mother called Mary? Oh, yes. Got that right. So they knew who Jesus was. Now, I wonder what the Catholic Bible says next. His brethren, James, he had a brother named James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas. Notice how much James, Simon, and Judas shows up in Jesus' life. Now, jo Judas is a Greek name for Judah. You know what the Catholics will say about that? That's his uncles, his nephews, and any other. It's brethren like their fellow Jews. I've heard that gash from a priest. But when they mention his father and he mentioned his mother, notice how they didn't mention Joseph's name. Something happened to Joseph that we don't know nothing about. He just becomes the carpenter. James, Joseph, I don't have nothing to say about Joseph, and Simon and Judas. King James Bible. You know what James means in the New Testament? Jacob of the Old Testament. And his sisters. Now, how, how do you get that one? Where do you escape from that one? Eh? Were the nuns? There were no nuns. That was Joshua's father. The nuns of the Catholic Church are transgender. They don't even know what they're supposed to be. 
Joshua the son of Nun, that was his father. His sisters, you got it? Mary had daughters. Joseph had daughters. They had sons. Are they not all with us in our town, in our city? Whence then has this man? They don't even name him. All these things, all these powers, all these words. What? Is, what? Who, who do you think he is? He's just a carpenter's son. And Mary, Miss High and Glory Mary, the angel visitor, and she never been with man. You know, they're just Mary. She's no, 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 no. I can see the Baptist attitude. The Baptist congregation women talking about it. You never see Mary reference. She's always with Jesus or the disciples. And they were offended in it. Look, look at all the offensive words that have come in. We in America are in the times of when Jesus Christ was rejected by Israel. Offended, 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 offended. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. You know, you know, if you become a born again Christian, you're going to serve the Lord, you will have to move. I have not known one Christian in my entire life where they remained where, where they grew up. You just don't work there. I've tried it. We practically did every house in Norwich, Connecticut, and got no fruit from it at all. At all. And he did not many mighty works. Mighty works. He tried his darnness. If I can say darnness. He tried not just works. Mighty works. Because of their unbelief. Not, the title of the nation right now. His own hometown is now rejecting him. The Pharisees and the scribes are rejecting him. He is speaking parables to, to the multitudes. Israel. Israel has closed their book on the Messiah. It's a sad case.